I remember growing up in church institutions where I thought holiness was dressed in a certain way, not wearing a hat and keeping your pants up and keep your shirt tucked in when you come to church, look sharp and nice. While the appearance of a believer ought to be presentable, the truth is that is not what it means to be holy. In John 15, starting at verse 1, he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that he may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of its own unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. When we look at when the Messiah is instructing his disciples who become apostles to spread the gospel, he's telling them that he is the only way for one to produce fruit, for one to actually look like they are the disciple. He didn't say based on uh, how they believe or based on their what's in their heart. He said what they do is a reflection of whether or not they abide in him. And... The truth is, if you don't produce fruit according to what the Messiah says, then guess what? You will not be kept in the end. The Father will take you away. This is why he goes on to say in verse 5, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned the messiah is telling us that it is our responsibility once we come into this faith as disciples not this universal christianity mentality that has swept the nations but as followers of the true and living son of the most high god we are supposed to abide in him as well as produce fruit this is a mandate that he tells us. When it comes to producing fruit, it begins and ends with keeping the commandments of the Most High God. This is how we know what it means to be holy, to be set apart. We don't understand holiness unless we understand what was given to us regarding Scripture. If you go back and you look at Genesis when Eve was deceived and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, disobeying the father. Before the serpent tempted her, she knew the law. She knew the first commandment ever given to those of, of the human race. Disregard for the law that caused them to be removed from the garden and ultimately the fall of humanity. To be holy, to be set apart, is to come out of this world. It's to not be conformed to this world. It is to live a life that is outside of the enemy's routines, plans, customs, and patterns that everybody falls uh, under when they're walking through this world. A lot of people like to use the Apostle Paul when he writes the Romans as an excuse not to live holy. And they say that because he tells the Romans that they are free from the law, but they don't have to actually uphold the law. But that's not what the Apostle Paul said. If you look at Romans chapter 7, verse 6, But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit and not the oldness of the letter. What is the Apostle Paul saying here? He is telling us that it is our responsibility to no longer live to the, to the law, to the letter of the law, but the Spirit. And he, what he's telling us is that our, that when we walk in this life of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that gets that get put inside of those who are born again, he's saying that our desires, the things that we want to do, is no longer to live according to sin, as being a reminder of the law, but more, but, but that we live in righteousness with the spirit of God inside of us. This is why he goes on to say in verse seven, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would have not known sin except through the law. 
For I would not have known covetousness unless the law said, you shall not covet. The apostle Paul is telling us that it was the law that let us know that we are living in sin. We identified, we are recognized in unrighteousness because the law was written, but it is the law of today, which is the commandments, the 10 commandments that we are to follow. And that sets us apart from the world. You know, the Pope came out with these 10 commandments that are supposed to help fight against climate change. This big deceptive lie that's being spread all over the world that we're dealing with an extreme climate crisis. And if we don't fix it, then our children won't be able to have a, a quality life uh, after we're gone. However, that is obviously the, the deception of Satan. And of course he using the Pope uh, to help uh, perpetuate this silly lie. But if we don't know the 10 commandments of the scriptures, we would think that the Pope uh, is telling us what we ought to do is, is holy and righteous and we should follow it. A letter is written to the Hebrews in chapter three, and it identifies some very pertinent facts about who we are and what we ought to do as the children of the most high God. A letter is written to the Hebrews in chapter three in verse 16, it says for who having heard rebel indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses now with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpse fell in the wilderness and to whom did he swear? that they will not enter his rest, but those who did not obey. So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. There's two words I want to pull out here so we can understand something. And hopefully we don't have to miss this going forward for the rest of our journey in this faith. This letter written to the chosen people of the most high God tells us that the people who fell, their corpses fell in the wilderness were those who came out of Egypt. The, those who were in led by Moses into the wilderness and they did not enter into the rest, the promise of the most high God that he had promised his people because they were disobedient. What was that disobedience? It was unbelief. If you go back and you look at the story of the Israelites, when Moses went up to get the 10 commandments, Every time he had a conversation with the most high God and he goes back, the people are doing wickedness. They're acting like they're still in Egypt. They're following these pagan ways. They created a golden calf. They did all these different things that they should not have done. And they made the most high God upset. So it is unbelief and obedience that go hand in hand. It is because they, they knew he was the most high God. They saw what he did. They experienced all that he did for them in the wilderness. Yet they continually disobeyed because their faith didn't align with their obedience. Their obedience didn't align with their faith. Both go hand in hand. This is why in the very next chapter, it says in verse one, therefore, since the promise remains to enter his rest, let us fear lest any of you shall have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter his rest, as he has said. So I swore in my wrath, they will not enter my rest. The Most High God did not allow the first Israelites his chosen people to enter into his rest, the promised land that he swore to give them. It was, and it was because of their disobedience, which in turn was a lack of faith. They did not believe these apostate churches that have erected all over the world, tell people that they don't have to actually do anything. They just simply need to believe. And if that was true, then obviously, the Israelites who came out of Egypt the first time would have entered into his rest because they believed he was the most high God, yet they didn't obey him. The apostle Paul really makes this clear when he writes the Romans in chapter eight, 
he says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Yahushua, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Again, that first scripture, Romans 8 verse 1, is what many people use to say, I'm not condemned because I believe I'm in Christ. But he, he explains, he elaborates on what that actually means to be in the Messiah. And that is to walk not after the flesh, but the spirit. He said, for the law of the spirit of life in Yahushua is, has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, Yah did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemns sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit cannot continue in sin and think that you're going to spend eternity with the most high God. That is the deception of the enemy. Who's always used God's word from the garden of Eden till now and manipulated. He twisted it and change it so that people can do whatever they want to do because they say they believe in the most high God. In verse five, he says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enemy against God for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please Yah. Powerful scripture right there that eradicates this deception that because you say the name of Christ and because you are even baptized that you do what you want, that you choose a life that you are comfortable with rather than a life that you're called to because you are now born again. Verse nine, he says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of Yah dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Yahusha, he is not his. But if Yahusha is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. In verse 11 said, but if the spirit of him who raised Yahushua from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Yahushua from the dead will give you life in your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. He's talking about life in your body so that you can actually live for the commandments. You can walk according to the truth and not the lie. You don't have to fulfill the de desires of the flesh because the Holy Spirit empowers you to walk righteous. In verse 12, he says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live again right into the Romans in chapter eight. Paul is telling them that you have to put to death the deeds of the body. How can you do this? When you look back over uh, what uh, is written about the Hebrews that came out of Egypt, it seems like they could never put to death the deeds of the body. Every time the Most High did an amazing miracle for them while they're in the desert coming out of the pagan land, they kept going back to the ways of unrighteousness. But when the Messiah came and died on the cross, and he went back to heaven. The Holy Spirit was sent to enable us to walk righteous, to enable us to obey, to have a heart and a mind for the commandments of the most high God, to not set our mind on the perishing things of the flesh. And it says, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoptions by whom we cry, Abba, Father, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of Yah. And if children, then heirs and heirs of Yah and joint heirs of Yahushua, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. 
He says that if indeed we suffer with him, what suffering is he talking about? He's talking about the suffering of laying aside sin, laying aside unrighteous ways. The scripture tells us that we war again. There's a, there's a war that goes on inside of us, uh, a, a spiritual and a fleshy war that constantly battles, and it's a struggle. However, as the Messiah tells the disciples, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. And he tells them this as he was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying, and he comes out, and they're asleep instead of watching. And he tells them to watch. And the reason he says watch, he says you have to pay attention because the adversary, the devil, goes to and fro looking to see who he may devour. How can we watch? How can we be alert? How can we do what he's commanded us to do if we don't have his spirit? And when we have his spirit, if we don't set our mind on what is righteous, how can we obey? But the enemy tells us you don't need to do any of that. Just confess that Christ died on the cross for your sins and rose again. And that's it. You're locked in to eternity. This is why the apostle Paul even goes on to say in verse 18, for I consider that the suffering of this present age is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. It is okay to suffer. He said, because it's not comparable to what will happen to us when we are transformed, when we are met up with the Messiah, when we go past uh, a judgment into eternal life, if we continue in righteousness. The reality is that we have to be obedient to the word of the most high God. It is not just thinking nice and sweet, smiling at people, sharing a couple of scriptures every now and then. Our personal life needs to align with the commandments that nowhere in the scripture says they were done away with. Because we have the spirit, now we can live according to. It is the grace of the most high God that when we do not uphold the commandments, we are not held to the letter of the law, meaning, okay, you uh, went out and, and disobeyed your parents. Now we need to go ahead and stone you. That is what the grace has given us, but we are still obligated to live holy and righteous. This is why the Messiah in teaching his disciples in John 15, verse 9, he says, As the Father loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. And in John 14, verse 15, it says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I pray the father will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot see because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be with you. And when you skip down to verse 21, it says, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. We have to obey the commandments of the most high God. We cannot fall for the deception that the enemy has planted with false apostles throughout most church institutions. And the reason he's done this because the enemy knows this, the serpent is slick, and he knows that without obedience, no one will see the most high God. Obedience is holiness. It is being set apart. And for us to be set apart, we have to have some type of standard. We have to have some type of regulation or rule to says, okay, this is what it means to be set apart. And if we don't have these rules, then anything goes. And therefore, there is no such thing as holiness for a person that lives however they want. Know this to be true. Without walking in righteousness with the most high God, we will not be at peace on that day. He tells his disciples, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? And then I will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who practice lawlessness, lawlessness is obviously according to scripture, sin. 
and sin is not abiding by the law. What is the law? It is the commandments that the most high God gave on those two tablets to Moses to give to his people. And those commandments are supposed to last until the end of time. So let us continue in the truth. Let us understand that we have to keep the commandments of God. This is the only way to understand how to be set apart from the world, which is to be holy, to be his Kodeshim. If we don't keep his commandments, then we look nothing like God's people. We look just like the world because the world cares nothing about upholding his commands. So know this to be true because without holiness, as the scripture tell us, no one will see the Lord and we all want to see him. That means we all have to obey and we have to follow and not be like the Israelites that came out of Egypt and never entered into the rest of the most high God because they did not obey. Hey, you guys have yourself a phenomenal day. Stay encouraged, stay in the truth, and remember, always be blessed.